So let's take a look at a, another setting in which the chain rule is used. Here we have several independent variables. So we looked before at the chain rule with one independent variable. Uh, what about when we have several independent variables? Okay, in a situation where you'll end up uh, using the chain rule with several independent variables, that's intuitive, is for example, say you have the map of the earth here uh, given in say a stereographic stereographic projection and the map of the earth given here in the um, uh, latitude and longitude and say you have the temperature in terms of the latitude and longitude so that if someone gave you a latitude and, and longitude you could find the temperature of the earth at that latitude and longitude but say you want the rate of change of the temperature not in terms of the latitude and longitude, but in terms of the, say, stereographic stereographic projection. Okay, so we have some kind of transformation to get to 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 the latitude and longitude from the stereographic projection, where you know you have, um, say, it's a latitude depends on certain parameters of the two parameters of the uh, stereographic projection, and likewise for the longitude. Okay, rather than talking about it that way, just x depends on s and t and y depends on s and t. So both x and y is thought of as a function of two variables. And z is a function of two variables, the two variables x and y. But you want the rate of change of z along s and t rather than x and y. So what you're, see what you're seeing there is the... Uh, map of the earth using the stereographic projection a stereographic projection preserves angles so here all the angles are correct that's why when you look up uh you you know from north america uh if you look north you will be getting to uh, russia if you look northeast from chicago you actually get to the metal middle east okay uh and europe so uh Stereographic projections, what you see there, and it preserves angles. So we could get the uh, 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 temperature, say, in terms of the, th this type of map, so that we give a point on this map and get the temperature. Or, for example, we could have gotten the uh, map of the Earth in terms of latitude and longitude. And for any given latitude and longitude, you get the uh, uh, temperature at that latitude and longitude. Okay. So what if you have that transformation that goes from stereographic projection to latitude and longitude and then the temperature given for a certain latitude and, and longitude, okay? Now, you then ask, well, I want to know the change in temperature as you move along the stereographic projections variables rather than the latitude and longitude. How do you do that? Uh, that is the idea of the chain rule with more than one variable. So we then have z given explicitly uh, by the, you know, defined explicitly by the variables x and y. But x and y are functions of two variables that depend on s and t, okay? It's kind of that transformation situation there. Um, so then we could ask, okay, I want the partial derivative of z, not with respect to x or y, which we already know how to do, but with respect to s which x and y depend on, okay? We then get this formula here where we take the partial derivative of z with respect to x and multiply it by the uh, partial derivative of x with respect to s, okay? And here I'm giving you that you need to plug in the, the uh, dependence of x on s and t as, as well as for, for y. And... Uh, Okay, we need to also then add to this term the, the, the similar term but with, with respect to y. Notice here we're taking partial derivative with respect to s for both y and x. Now if you want the partial derivative of z with respect to t, it's a similar formula except we're taking now partial derivatives with respect to t. I put in the explicit dependencies there to emphasize that you need to end up with a function of z of uh, uh, S and, and T, uh, but oftentimes you'll see this formula written this way. 
that partial z with respect to the, the, the derivative of z with respect to s, okay, the partial derivative, is um, given by this formula here, partial z partial x partial x partial s, and uh, likewise for, for t. Okay. So let's uh, look at a concrete example of how this works. So here we have the function z that depends explicitly on x, y this way. But x is a function of st given here, and y is also a function of st given here. Okay. Our objective is to compute the partial derivative of z with respect to s and t. Okay. Well, how do we do that? Let's just use the formula. So partial z partial x. There we are. Partial x partial s. That's this guy here. Uh, partial z partial y. Here we are. And partial y partial s, which is given here. Okay. So plugging all of these in. And uh, you know this is this is what you'll get when you take the partial derivative of z with respect to x. Don't forget that you have to plug in what x and y is. Okay, so this is where we're getting these terms here. And uh, simplifying it, we get this. Okay, so this is the partial derivative of z with respect to s. Well, what is s? S is um, one of the variables that x and y depend on that go in turn x and y. Uh, are what z explicitly depends on. Likewise, we take the partial derivative with respect to t, and we uh, plug them in the formula, not forgetting to plug in the uh, the functions of x and y with you know that that are defined in terms of s and t, and we get uh, that final answer. Now, I make a remark that what we could have done <coughs> initially is take this x s plus t okay and just plug it directly into that x there and we could have taken this y that depends on s and t plugged it in <coughs> to that y there and then taken partial derivatives with respect to s and t and we would get the same final answer uh, but likewise again we want to talk about this as more general separ separating these two concepts uh, of um, the functions that are given for x depending on s and t and y depending on s and t versus a function that depends on x and y. So it's good to have the concept, even though practically you can compute by just plugging in first. Okay, so this idea can be then generalized, the chain rule. I mean, here we have some function w that depends on x, y, and z. But x, y, and z depend on the two variables s and t. So then how would we get, say, partial derivative uh, with respect to s? Well, we have this uh, tree diagram where we have w. w depends on x, y, and z. And then x, y, and z depend on each on s and t. So that if we want the partial derivative with respect of w with respect to s, so all the way down here, we find where the s's are at the end, and we um, we find the different ways to get to that s. So here is one way. We pass through from w to z, and then from z to s. We get a partial w partial z, and then a partial z partial s along the way, and that's that term here. We could have likewise gone through this way, and that's that term here, and through this way and we get that term. Uh, you could even have this situation where w depends on just one variable, z, but z depends on two variables, x and y, and x and y depend on one variable, t. Okay. So in that situation you could draw that t diagram. You go from w to z because w only depends on z. z depends on x and y, right? Uh, and then going down from x to t and y to t, we get uh, these terms. And now, let's uh, say we want the d dw dt. Well, how do we get to t at the bottom? There's two paths. One is this way. We get a dw dz. That's that. 
multiplied by partial z partial x that's that multiplied by dx dt and that's that okay and we add it to the second way we could get down to that t and uh, that's where you would get that second term okay so this is ideas to generalize the chain rule I mean how I like to think about this is take a look at say this term here think about and this is not precise this is just a kind of um, intuitive way so you could cancel out this dz with that dz right cancel out that dx with that dx right that's canceled that's canceled you're left in with a dw dt which is what we want now in how many ways can you get that dw dt well one is through the path of you know uh, z and then x right so that's where these are coming in and another is through y and again notice with the y term dz dz cancel dy dy cancel you get this dw dt at the end do they really cancel no okay i'm, I'm just this is notation uh, just for you having a type of um, kind of intuitive way to remember these things and notice here d dw ds right partial w to partial s and how many ways can you write that well these x's will cancel you get a partial w partial s there and this is through the pathway of x you could get it through the pathway of y you could still get that dw ds and you could get it through the pathway of z you still get that dw ds all of these terms when you finish out the quote cancellations which absolutely you don't really cancel um, will end up with the final term that you want here it's just a sort of mnemonic that i found useful um, not quite sure that many other people have found it useful but uh, i just threw that out there for you